So I look. You're already gonna give me anesthesia. And you're already gonna give me pain medicine after. I'm not taking all that medication. I'm like, no, I'm not doing it. It's like five o'clock in the morning. Um, this is the day of my surgery. And so for those of you guys who are not aware, I'm getting a hernia um, corrected. I'm just glad that I'm here, you know, getting ready to get it corrected. Yeah, so I see you guys when I come out of the surgery. What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode. Um, yeah, so in this episode, I think it's special only because for some of you guys who've been following my fitness journey, you've been hearing me complain or discuss about this hernia that sits above my belly button. You guys have been seeing it and it's really annoying. So um, in this episode, I'm gonna take you guys with me um, on the day of my surgery because I finally had it and I'm really excited about it. And yeah, you guys are gonna know kind of like what was going on during that time and also, um, I'm gonna talk about a little bit about my hernia and to kind of describe it a little bit so you guys know how long I've had it, you know, and why I waited so long to get it corrected and all of that and what's, uh, what you guys can expect next, um, you know, from me after, you know, I go through this whole healing process and everything like that. So, um, yeah, if you guys um, wanna know what, you know, transpired and how I felt about everything and how everything went, and want to see some footage and pictures maybe, then continue to watch. You know, I'm headed to uh, my surgery. They wanted me actually there to um, about an hour early. My surgery wasn't until like 6.30. Um, so they wanted me there an hour ahead of time, but I decided to get there like two hours ahead just because, just in case um, we wanted to get like footage and maybe I wanted to like say or speak on something or whatever, I don't know. But I like to just be early just so number one, I can gather my thoughts and rest and just have some quiet time before I go into the surgery. Yeah, on accident, uh, he went, he was flying in front of the car. I thought he was gonna make it because he disappeared and then the right side of the lower car, you just heard that loud thump. And then when I look in every rear view, he's literally fighting for his life. And I just, I mean, I don't know. They told us, you know, animals, you're supposed to just don't swerve, you know what I'm saying? But I don't like killing stuff. I wanted to just back up a little bit because um, some of you guys don't even know that um, my surgery had been rescheduled like twice and that was very discouraging um, throughout this fitness journey because um, for, for some of you guys who've been following, it was very important for me to get this um, surgery done and so they've been pushing it back. Also, I was told that I had to have a COVID um, test 48 hours before the surgery. And I ran into troubles with that because when they rescheduled me um, at the last minute, I couldn't find anyone to do my COVID test on a Sunday. Um, and it was just really nerve wracking, you know. Um, and so you guys will see it when I go and get myself checked into the hospital. They take me into this room and you know, they put me there so they can come in and actually perform the COVID test, which nobody even told me they would even do it. Um, so I was kind of worried that I would have to reschedule my um, surgery because I was panicking because where I went and got my COVID test done, they told me I wasn't gonna be able to get it um, in enough time. And then when I called the hospital to let them know what was going on, they told me I wasn't gonna be able to get it there, you know, so it was just news that, you know, when I got there, even though they told me, oh, we'll just come anyway, you know. Um, so I kind of figured at that point they were gonna like take a test when, you know, once I got to the hospital. So I got the test done and I had to wait there for like, um, 
20 to 30 minutes for the results and it was freezing in this room. It was like really cold. And then um, they had to take me and prep me for the surgery. So I look, I know, but so um, they had to prep me for surgery. And so I'm literally sitting here looking ridiculous right now, but it's just, I just get so irritated with all the questions and and then it's like they kind of insult you a little bit, you know, because they're just expecting you to be sick. Like, if I tell you I don't have nothing, I don't have nothing, you know. If I don't want to get your medication, they want you to take some type of um, pain medicine before I go into surgery so that it won't be so as bad after. I'm like, no, you're already going to give me anesthesia and you're already going to give me pain medicine after. I'm not taking all that medication. I'm like, no, I'm not doing that. So, so I'm ready to go home at this point. I wanna go home. I wanna go home. So I'm not scheduled to go in until 8.30. I don't know what time it is right now. What time is it? I don't know. But I'll probably be going in surgery in another 30 to 40 minutes. So I don't know. We'll see. I'm like wheeled off to the OR and I don't even remember. Because by the time I, I was I was already out, I don't even, I don't even remember going into an OR because I was already knocked out, right? I don't remember any of that. And so when I woke up, I'm like sedated and then tired and in pain, you know? And, um, and yeah, and I was kind of disappointed because my doctor, never came in to talk to me like when I had the other hernia corrected because um, I had another hernia from that was from a, a, one of the pregnancies I had but you know he didn't even come in to like speak to me afterwards to let me know to kind of like sh describe everything let me know what I'm seeing let me know what's going on what to expect you know blah blah, blah. like usually they have that follow-up conversation before you leave the hospital that never happened so I was kind of disappointed with that. Um, I don't know, I just felt like the staff could have been a little bit, had a little bit more bedside manner, be more friendly, but they, it just is what it, what it is, um, you know? And so, um, yeah, I, I don't know. Um, by the time I left the hospital, like I said, I was out of it. Um, I really just wanted to sleep most of that day and the next day you know um i have a high tolerance for pain but i'm gonna tell you when i'm not taking when the medication starts wearing off it's really painful um but you know i don't know so i'm just glad that i had the surgery done i'm glad that it's over with i'm glad that I made it out alive because <laughs> during this day and time, you know, it's a blessing to make it out of the OR alive. So I'm just grateful that I have all my organs still, you know, and um, I don't know. And yeah, I'm planning on um, continuing my fitness journey, but I'm going to be out for like a month. They told me two weeks I can actually start back some light um, exercise like the treadmill. I still can't lift anything over 20 pounds. Um, I really can't lift anything to be honest after a month. So they told me just wait a month. So I'm kind of discouraged because you know it's gonna take me some time to get back into my split. It's gonna I'm gonna have to work my way back up to that because I'm gonna get really stiff and then work my way back up to certain things. So it's kind of like a setback. Um, so that's kind of disappointing. 
And it's just, I don't like hospitals and I don't like surgery, which is why I waited so long to get the hernia corrected because when I was diagnosed with the hernia in high school, um, I developed the hernia. Um, the hernia sits right above my belly button. It's about the size of a dime. So it was literally about like this size when I developed it. And I received the hernia or I developed it as a result of lifting heavy things. So as a, when I was waitressing and I was lifting and having to bust my own tables. So that's how I developed it. And my doctor at the time, um, you know, told my mother that I can either have the surgery or if it wasn't if it wasn't hurting me or bothering me, I didn't have to have the surgery because it wasn't like protruding or sticking out or anything like that and it was really not noticeable. So the only time it was noticeable is if I was found carrying something heavy, then it would kind of like pop out. So like my abdominal wall is like this and this is the way he described it. And so what happened is like my intestine um, would come through the abdominal wall like this and you know, when it's, I guess, when I'm straining or something, and then it would kind of like recede back like that when, you know, everything is normal. And so for pretty much my whole young adult life, I didn't, nobody ever knew, you know? And when I started strength training, that bad boy decided to <laughs> come out and stay out. And then it just got, it just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And I couldn't hide it. Like it was literally showing through my clothes and it was just kind of not embarrassing, but it was annoying, you know? And um, I didn't want to just make it worse. So here I am having the surgery. And um, I believe my pregnancies made it worse. It weakened, my pregnancies weakened my abdominal wall. But I'm just gonna keep going anyway. So, that's all I have to say about that. So, you know, um, I was gonna show you guys, like, my scar, just so you guys can see what it looks like. So, I'm gonna show you a little bit of footage, I guess, of that, because it looks really ugly at first. But, you know, um, I was reassured that it was gonna be very minimal, very minimal scarring, like you wouldn't hardly tell after it like completely heals. So, but I'm gonna show you guys my scar just so that you guys can see what I'm working with. And I mean, and I don't care anyway. So, so you guys can see that. I'm gonna, I am gonna, I am gonna put myself on this. Guys, I'm so happy that I got, that that speed bump on my belly is finally gone. You know what I mean? I felt like, I felt like I had a third breast for a minute there. It was just, it was just getting out of hand. So I'm getting ready to make me some fruit because I can't have anything heavy on my stomach right now. So I'm gonna try to recreate some real quick, just like spicy fruit type of situation. But I'm, I'm tired, not in as much pain as I was earlier. That's because my painkillers are kicking in, but I'm so excited y'all that that thing is gone. You have no idea. So yeah, I'm getting my geriatric on. I'm getting my geriatric on. Okay, to, um, the mango. All right. I decided to do it. Decided to let people know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm done. So continue to follow me, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video.